Hello, buenos días, good morning, bonjour. Welcome to the Daily Huddle, Spiritual Matters Thursday. I'm your host, Dr. Monica Ogando. I'm so excited that you are here with us today, this morning, darling, because we're going to talk about work as a spiritual discipline. We've been doing spiritual discipline series this summer. Uh, last summer, we did a series and it was a hoot. So this summer, we're doing it again and we're ending with uh, work as a spiritual discipline. And um, the reason I came up with this one is because I have long been a fan of Stoicism. Stoicism is a manner of philosophy, if you will. Uh, it is the it is usually attributed to, but not originated by, uh, Greek philosophers and and um, and rulers. And the whole premise of it is. Um, really focusing on the like diving into difficulties diving into the nitty-gritty of life and in that nitty-gritty in the devotion to mastery of our quotidian lives we find significance we find greatness we find transcendence and so we're going to talk about work as a spiritual discipline today welcome to the daily huddle i can't wait let's get started um um yeah so about the, the video about the video <laughs> <laughs> so about that video oh okay uh, we don't have it <laughs> we don't have it am i supposed to do jazz hands now Como Johnny Ventura. okay listen we start when we show up <laughs> That's that's the name of the game. Um, so so let's get grounded in in our present moment and really get clear about I'm gonna do it differently. I'm gonna do it differently today because you know we're just moving differently today. It's a couple of days after the full moon. We have a different energy. So I'm gonna the question that I'm gonna ask today is um what are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? Um, let me see. Who do I pick on today? Stan, what are you thankful for? Hey, Doc, I, I'm thankful for a community like this. Yeah. Yeah. Such a supportive community. Community of concern. That's what I'm thankful for. Ooh, community of concern and community of practice because we get to practice and be witnessed in our greatness. No doubt. I love it. Uh, where's Rashida? Is Rashida here? Rashida's here. You know, I, I listen, Dr. Argando. I thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, I just love when you are shared space with me, and I'm here. Yes, I am here. <laughs> I love it. And who are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? Me. I am me. so thankful me. to the universe and to my ancestors me. for the blessing mm -hmm. that instilled in me. And I'm so grateful for every single body Amen. that leaves some influence in my life Amen. and my part. I'm thank you so much. Okay, don't make me get up here and do the Pentecostal dance. Come and on and now. then there's somebody there in the car that's saying, Me, me, you're thankful for me. Oh, <laughs> yay. That's my, that's my crazy buddy. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the daily He's like, me, me. <laughs> Give me some credit, Dag Navi. <laughs> Give me some love. I want some love. I love it. I love it. Uh, I, too, Rashida and Stan, I am very thankful for this community of practice and for the ways in which we come together every day at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. Child, three o'clock Hawaii time, so that we can, um, so that we can practice and love uh, on one another. Today, uh, we're talking about work as a spiritual discipline. And if you'll allow me a point of privilege to go on a rant first, can I do that? Can I go on a rant first and then set up the conversation? Okay, thank you. So here we go. Uh, for the past, let's say, 200 years, 
thereabouts. Uh, with the start and the and the uh, precedence or the presence of the Industrial Revolution, we have defined work as this thing that we do to get our to meet our living our subsistence needs. It's separate and apart from our purpose, separate and apart from our family, separate and apart from our day-to-day -day life. That's why we have this conversation about work-life balance as the work is separate from life. <laughs> and we have to somehow balance this thing that doesn't belong in our life. Okay. And I was just sharing with, my, with a friend of mine uh, yesterday that, uh, that the days when the children are going back to school are getting earlier and earlier. It used to be that we would go to school after Labor Day. And now it's like kids have started July 31st. I'm like, what in the world? And, and I understand why. This is, this is Giovanni, to, to my earlier point before we started recording, this is one of the reasons why I want to talk to you about late stage capitalism. Um, so the reason why that is, is because we used to have our children as part of the family life, family function, and when winter was over and spring started and things started blooming, et cetera, at the summer, at the peak of summer, that was harvest season. And so we needed more hands on deck in order to help us collect the harvest, which is why we wanted the children to be out there with us in the fields and in the world. And once the harvest was got and we put all our jars away in our mason jars and put cured the meat and everything else, it's like, okay, let's give the children something to do. So we sent them to school for the rest of the fall and the winter and the spring until it was time to come out and do and help the family with the harvest again. That's where that school year calendar started. And we do not live in that world anymore. And so to force a child to sit in a classroom and listen to somebody spew things and, and then be accused of being disruptive when they use their critical thinking, I'm just besides myself. But this is also what we do with, with the work schedule that um, with, the, with the advent of the industrial revolution, corporate moguls would have factories and, and manufacturing stations and places where uh, people would go to work. And it was really a manner of sharecropping um, in urban centers where uh, you produced a good, you produced a widget, you produced a particular service. Um, and the whole point of capitalism is the most profit for the least effort, which is where we get a lot of violence, human on human violence um, and exploitation. And so um, with that background, with that context, how could work possibly be a spiritual discipline? It sounds like it's a spiritual violation. <laughs> So we're gonna to have to define work for our purposes of our discussion, a bit different than how we have used it and weaponized it in our capitalistic societies. And I'm going to, for the purposes of our discussion, define work as the use of your gifts in devotion to your purpose. That's your work. That's what you're here to do in this life, in this world, with these people that you touch during your lifetime. And during your lifetime, you touch different people in different phases. Sometimes when you're a child, the only people that you touch and that touch you are your immediate family. And then you grow up and you have friends and you have communities and you have neighbors and you have, uh, you go off and maybe you move to a different place geographically and you get married and then you adopt a different family and so forth. So you, across your life, you, you touch different people and I'm going to assert, you know, because one of our one of our tenets here in the Daily Huddle is that uh, you always check yourself before you wreck yourself. You always audit your assumptions, and the first part of auditing your assumptions is being aware that you have them, right? And I am operating under the assumption that you are born with a particular purpose for your life, and you are always living it, just like you're born with lungs and you're always breathing. <laughs> And to the extent that your lungs malfunction or your breath is compromised, you're in distress and something doesn't work in your life and you won't get it together. You won't be available for anything else until you handle that. In the same way, you will always feel some level of dissatisfaction if you're not in alignment with the, your 
uh, purpose in your life. And you're always in some way or another, consciously or unconsciously doing it. In that sense, work can be a spiritual discipline. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So I want to talk about under, under that definition, can we use the work that we use for a paycheck, <laughs> the work that we use for revenue, can we use that as a spiritual discipline? And how can we use it as a spiritual discipline? Maybe we can use it as a spiritual discipline when we identify those pieces, those gaps of dissatisfaction, of triggers, of, um, of something ain't right here. It's, it's what I call sacred rage. And uh, in this culture, we, we shy away from feeling our rage and from expressing our rage because in the past, we've, we've weaponized it. We've used it to harm people instead of to, to use it for liberation or for revolution. But when we use work as a spiritual discipline, we can use it as a training ground. What skills am I missing? Where have I dropped the ball? Um, what really makes my heart sing? Is this it? Uh, this is, and maybe this skill is not my ministry and I'm okay with it not being my ministry. That just means I need to partner with somebody for whom this skill is a gift that they don't have to think about it. It comes naturally to them. And then that partnership becomes something that feeds each other. So let's talk about it. I want to talk to you about how you are already using work as a spiritual discipline or how this conversation is an invitation for you to use work as a spiritual discipline. Ooh, Florence has her hand up already. Let's go. <laughs> okay, well, for me, um, I used work as a spiritual discipline in that, first of all, I noticed my discomfort with what I was doing. But what I did was to say, I was going to practice integrity while I was doing what I was doing. And so I worked as a nurse for 14 years, did not really enjoy the practice of giving the all like eight and 10 different medications to, to my elderly patients because I really did not see that it was really beneficial to them. And then I feel, felt that they weren't receiving any holistic um, care and they were just like a piece of um, money producing tool or something in the nursing home. So I, I was really uncomfortable with that. But at least what I did, I was true to my well, institution or, and to myself that I did honestly, like I, I was, I gave an honest day's work for the, the, the pay that I received or the contract that I made with them. So yeah. I used it as a spiritual, you know, thing at that time. And I noticed, as I said, the discomfort. So I, I, I know, I knew there was a time limit I would put on what I was doing, I knew it would not give me the prosperity that I was looking for. And so I was able, when the time came, even though other people did not think it was the right time for me to retire, I retired because I'm like, I'm ready. I'm ready to enter the next phase of my life, the right phase that I want to be in, do what I want to do and receive and, and find the prosperity that I know that I, that is my birthright. Mm -hmm. So with that, I use my, my job, uh, you know, my work as um, a spiritual practice yeah. and I complete. Yeah, thank you so much for saying that. I really, really appreciate that. And it's such, a, such an important reminder for us. Um, is that Cece? Is that Cece with the hand up? Of course. Hey. Thank you. I love the topic. Um, God has a way of, well, he had a way with me of, of, of dismissing me from my job and I had no plan. 
So since I didn't have a plan, I had, I chose to get quiet. That means meditate, you know, listen. And what, what has come to me was, is weight loss coaching. Mm -hmm. And so I've been coaching for a few years and my clients are, um, are doing well. And I'm asking them to do things that I am committed to doing myself. So the things I ask them to do, I apply to myself. So, uh, so mm-hmm. that's how I'm s- staying accountable in integrity with my clients as well as myself. And I can see how I am putting my spiritual values above anything. And I'm seeing how, uh, how God is blessing me financially because of giving this or providing this service to someone else. I love it. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Good stuff. What about you, Chase? What you have? You know, um, I've never, ever thought of myself as having a job. That's number one. Mm -hmm. But what I do or what I do as an artist, it is already undoubtedly laced in spirit when i do what i do i transfer my spirit through other people and they in turn are hopefully enlightened and feel a little less stress after i arrive Mm -hmm. so whenever in my life that i've had a job which is when i was younger Mm -hmm. like just learning about working that's the time when i felt like it was a job When people say, what do you do? What's your job? Or what do you do for work? And I say, I don't work, I play. (laughs) And they say, what do you mean? And I explain it to them, I'm a musician. And they say, oh, the misconception is that the musician has an easy life. Like if sometimes, you know, when someone wants to hire me and they don't have my rate the right way, they look at it as, oh, you're just, you know, you're playing. Like, this is good, right? This is a good amount for playing. (laughs) And I'm like, no, you don't understand. It's This is what I do. There's lots of effort that goes into it. Effort that you can't even see because you're not around me all the time. But it's not work, it's play, but it's concentrated play that needs a specific focus Mm -hmm. to arrive a certain way. Mm -hmm. And that, you could call it work. I like to call it uh, effort or spiritual effort. Like a, you, you're more focused in this area so that you can um, produce what you need to do. And at times, which happened to me just recently, someone said, I want you to come to this party and I want you to do this in just like three songs over three hours. And we started talking and then they said, oh, by the way, there's no pay. I'm just going to. I'm going to feed you. You're going to meet all these great people. It's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. And I was like, um, I can't do it for free. And they were like, yeah, but you know, it's just like, you know, fun. Like you always do. And again, I realized that they took it in a specific way. Like you're playing, Mm -hmm. you're not working. Mm -hmm. And so my spiritual um, journey through what I do is it's my love. It's my play. And if I don't arrive authentically, then I don't deliver my message properly. And then it becomes work. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that you have brought up a really interesting dichotomy that we, again, with the check yourself before you wreck yourself, audit your assumptions in, in common dialect, in our common language, we think work has to be not fun, has to be suffering, has to be serious, has to be, you know, just putting in your hours type deal or whatever, which again is a remnant of our industrial revolution recent past. Um, Because prior to that, people contributed to their families, to their communities, et cetera, based on their skills and based on um, their strengths and, and their interests and so forth. So you wouldn't put a musician to uh, pick up, uh, to, to tend to cattle, 
it's not their ministry. They would first of all, they'll fail miserably. And secondly, nobody would enjoy it. Not the cattle, not the, not the musician, nobody, nobody would enjoy that. <laughs> and so uh, we want to, we want to disabuse ourselves from this notion of like work has to be serious and it has to be completely separate from what makes our hearts sing. Ron, you have something. Is Ron there? Will he speak? Will he unmute himself? Okay. You're on mute, Ron. There we go. Oh, he's working it out. He's working it out. Okay, while well, he's working it out, Giovanni, Hello. you have Oh, there he is. There he is. There he is. Oh, man. Sorry. I'm just trying to get ready for a meeting quick, but I want, I want to be really quick. Uh -huh. This is really interesting because I found myself for suddenly when I'm wrapping up my meditation, mm -hmm. I'm saying, God, let me do this today for your glory. And this is one way I've been wrapping up my prayer in the morning. I love it. God, let me do this for your glory. So I'm thinking, I mean, it's just a, it's just a jolt of, of energy that comes from that statement. So, so I'm like, and I have, trust me, I have a lot to do. I'm, not, I'm about to start a meeting in a few minutes, but it's just this energy that I, when I say it, I feel so powerful when I say it. Mm -hmm. so I wanted to share that with you guys. Awesome. Can't stay too long, but I love the topic. We'll, we'll do it on the, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it on the 12th. Yes, yes, Bye. we will. Yes, we will. That was a good segue. <laughs> Giovanni, you have something? Yeah, I was going to add in the in, in reflecting on this conversation that um, I think for me, the, 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 the have, I've had different stages where I look at work as uh, as a means to something mm -hmm. but my what i care about what what's meaningful to me for many years wasn't necessarily my work right uh but what really made the transition for me uh to to create to have my life be designed by me what made the transition was actually someone who had been practicing uh, Buddhism for a long time, mm -hmm. and I was I was complaining to him how I didn't like my work and I didn't like my job and I didn't want to be inside of this structure of nine to five and how I feel like I'm not living my life's purpose and I was kind of complaining that way, and he said to me only until only until you can find your nine to five your purpose, your self-expression, only until you can find sp your, like thus, you can find yourself, all of yourself in what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't change it for anything. Like you love it, all of it, the extra hours, the little commission, the all, until you find yourself loving all of it, it will be very difficult for you to make the transition that you want. Mm. And uh, and so I took on doing that. I took on my nine to, it was more than that, my nine to seven, whatever. Yes. And I took on the working a lot of hours and I took it on for a, something I was going to surrender to and love it and not want, not look somewhere else for something better for my life. And in that spiritual journey to get there was, in my way of looking at things, was what gave me the tools to get to do something else, to lead, to lead me to the life now I get to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I wanted yeah. to say. Sweet. I love what you're sharing here. What I'm, what I'm hearing, what you're sharing is that um, until we can embrace all of it, uh, the greatness of it, the depth of it, the intimacy of it, the glory of it isn't available. It's it's also in the little things. It's also in the in the drudgery of it, like the the Siddhartha says. Rashida, last words. 
thank you uh -oh. so much, Dr. Ogando, for the topic. Rashida, you have that signal. Very interested because then I was thinking of my grandpa. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Oh, you said grandpa, you had me at grandpa. And now I want another story, but maybe you can put it in the chat. <laughs> um, I want I want to invite everybody, remind everybody, because we've been talking about it at, at almost every episode of the Daily Huddle, that we are going to have the, the, the Daily Huddle event, com, dot com, coming up August 12th in Atlanta, Georgia. You can go to thedailyhuddleevent.com to register. You do need a ticket to get in. And we are going to be in real life, in person, get your hugs in real life, connect with the rest of the Daily Huddle community that's going to be there and with the Daily Huddle um, hosts that you see every Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And um, it's an opportunity for us to have these kinds of discussions uh, in person, eye to eye, aura to aura, personal space to personal space. So this is going to be amazing. Again, September, uh, not September, listen to me, August 12th, let's tarry not, August 12th, that is in uh, nine days. It's in less, less, it's in about a week. So make sure you go to thedailyhuddleevent.com to get your ticket. Uh, I will be there. Chase is going to be there. Giovanni is going to be there. Maybe Giovanni may be there. He may be doing a, a guest appearance like, like Beyonce does sometimes and other people's stuff. <laughs> uh, but I know Sorrell is going to be there. Tara Heaton is going to be there. It's, um, and the Otays are going to be there. It's going to be a grand old time. You don't want to miss it. And as always, make sure that you love generously, that you laugh obnoxiously, that you stress less, that you eat more plant-based food, that you get yourself at least have an hour of sleep, that you uh, give generously, and that you move your tail feather, exercise, dance, twerk, you know, raise that kundalini energy and check yourself before you wreck yourself. Always audit your assumptions. Can't wait to see you on the 12th. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great one, Doc, and family. Peace. Thanks, everybody.